hello hoping that you are fine i'd like to introduce the other topic we are bringing to you from shifting grades before we start i request you kindly subscribe to our channel and you continue sharing our links uh, the topic is indices and logarithms and we are going to start with indices indices is the plural of index and an index in mathematics is the power into which a certain number has been raised therefore if for example we say 2 power 3 it means 3 is the index into which 2 has been raised and it means 2 times 2 times 2 which is 8 therefore 2 raised to an index of 3 gives us 8 and that is what we mean by an index therefore it is good to note that when a number is raised to index 0 we get 1 and it is also important to master that when you have a number and you raise it to power 1 you just get the number itself therefore a number raised to index 0 the result is 1 a number raised to index 1 the result is the number itself i'll go straight to the laws of indices and the first law of indices says that when you have a number a raised to power m times the same number raised to a different index the result is when you take the number a then you just sum up the indices so when a power m is multiplied by a power n the result is a raised to the sum of the two indices again we say that when you have a number a raised to m divide by a raised to n then the result is a raised to the difference between the two indices therefore when we are dividing a number which has been raised to a given power and the same same number raised to a, a different index the products or the answer is the same number but we take now the difference in the two indices we also have the product law which says that if you have a number a and you raise it to power m then we have a multiplying index there n the result is a raised to the product of the two indices m times n we have the fourth law which is called the negative law and it says this eh? when you have a number a raised to a negative index m then the result is you take the reciprocal of a like that then the power becomes positive therefore a number raised to a negative index the result is 1 over the number then the power becomes positive then lastly the fifth law which is called the fraction law says that when you have a number a and you raise it to a power which is a fraction for example m over n the result is you take the nth root of a so you take nth root of a and the answer now you raise it to power m so i'd like now to visit some examples bearing in mind the given laws here so let us look at some examples example number one i'll write it on the board when you are given 27 
power two thirds multiplied by eighty one divide by sixteen and this one is raised to negative a quarter. You are told to evaluate. You are told to evaluate. So this is how we go about it. Very fast, we know that uh, this is 27 raised to a fractional power or index. And therefore, we are applying the last law we have recorded here, which says that when you have a number raised to a fractional law, then you take the roots of the denominator, then you raise to the power in the numerator. And therefore, we will take the third root of 27, because this is 2 over 3, then now all this we square. Then we multiply by, in the next part, we have a negative index. Therefore, we should note that we apply the fourth law, which is saying that when the index is negative, we take the reciprocal of the number, then now the power becomes positive. And therefore, the reciprocal of 81 over 16 is when the denominator and the numerator changes their position. The interchange, now we have 16 all over 81. Then, now because we have taken the reciprocal of the number, the power becomes positive, like that. Therefore, in this case, the third root of 27, or cube root of 27, is 3, and we are taught to square, then times, the fourth root of 4, let me get it from the calc, 4 of 16, it gives us 2, divide by the fourth root of 81, which is 3, the fourth root of 81, which is 3, therefore now with that, we can square this one, and it will give us a 9 times 2, all over 3, when you simplify this one, when you simplify 9 times 2 over 3, you find by 3, this is 1, by 3, 3. So the answer is 6. The answer is 6. With that, allow me give another example. Allow me give another example and I am going to write it on the board. You are told... Find the value of x. Find x. We are solving for x. And the question is, 49 x plus 1. Then plus 7 raised to power 2x is equals to 350. This is what we are told to solve in this case. This is how we go about it. Solution. Remember, the lowest power here, or the lowest base in this case, is 7. And therefore, we should try to express all the other bases to base 7. And when 49 is expressed to base 7, it becomes 7 squared. Therefore, what you will have here, instead of 49, power x plus 1 is 7 raised to power 2. Then we have the index which is x plus 1 plus 7 power 2x is equal to 350. So here you can open the bracket and this becomes 7 power 2x plus 2, then plus 7 power 2x is equals to 350. It is good to note this, that in the first law, we said that when we have a number raised to a given index, and the same number to a different index, 
the solution is the number raised to the sum of the indices. And therefore, in this case, it is good to know that if we have 7 raised to power 2x plus 2, then it means the reverse of this one is 7 power 2x multiplied by 7 power 2. So that when simplified, we get this. Then plus 7 power 2x is equals to 300 and 50. So with that now, this one is something known. Therefore, we can say 7 raised to power 2 is equals to 49. Then we have times 7 power 2x, because you don't know what x is, plus 7 power 2x is equals to 350. We can see now that 7 power 2x is occurring twice. Therefore, we can express it as a different unknown, and we let 7 power 2x be something else like y. Now, when we have 7 power 2x as y, we can replace it with y now in this expression. So we will have 49y plus, this is 7 power 2x, and we will let it to be y, is equals to 350. With that, this gives us 50y is equal to 350. Therefore, when you cancel out 50, you remain with i, y equals to 7. But it is good to note, it is good to note that y is equal to 7 power 2x. Therefore, because we have solved for y and we've gotten that it is 7, then we can say our 7 power 2x is equal to 7. 7, this is just raised to power 1. Therefore, now because the base is the same, we can now equate the indices and say 2x is equal to 1. To remain with x, you divide by two both sides, and x is equals to half. I will very fast take you through another similar example so that we might be together before I go to the next subtopic. We are taught again, solve the equation, solve the equation, 9 power x plus 1, 9 power x plus 1, plus 3 power 2x plus 1 is equal to 36. So now, this is the equation we are going to solve. Very fast, we can see that the least base here is 3. Therefore, we try to express the other bases as 3. And 9 expressed to base 3 becomes 3 squared. 9 is 3 squared. Therefore, we can now say this is 3 squared into x plus 1 plus 3 power 2x plus 1 is equal to 36. Remember again that we should open this bracket. Therefore, 3 it becomes power 2x plus 2 plus 3 power 2x plus 1, which is equal to 36. 36 cannot be expressed to base 3. That is why we are leaving it the way it is. Because 3 power 2 is 9, 3 power 3 is 27, 3 power 4, it becomes 81. Therefore, 36 cannot be perfectly expressed to base 3. That's why we are leaving it the way it is. Now, again, to the law number 1, which says that a number raised to a given index times the same number to a different index is equals to the number raised to the sum of the indices. Then it means that for us to have 3 raised to power 2x plus 2, it means initially it was 3 raised to power 2x times 3 raised to 2, then plus 3 raised to 2x times 3 raised to 1, which is equal to 36. With this now, we can say that 3 power 2 is known, and we know it is 9. Therefore, we have 9 
3 power 2x is still unknown, plus 3 raised to 1 is 3. Then 3 power 2x plus, or these are these equals, is equals to 36. Therefore, now, because 3 power 2x is appearing as the only unknown here, then we can let it, can let the 3 power 2x to be something like t. Any unknown, you can use any letter of your choice instead of the t I'm choosing here. Therefore, this becomes 9t plus 3t is equal to 36. When you sum up this is 12t is equal to 36. And with this, we can say that t is equals to 3 when you cancel out with the 12. Therefore, now, we can say, we can now say that because we had let 3 power 2x to be t, and we have known that t is equals to 3, then we can relate 3 power 2x is equals to 3. And because this is just 3, we can say it is raised to power 1. Therefore, because the base is uniform, then we can equate the indices and say 2 power x is equals to 1. Simplifying through by 2, x becomes 1 over 2. And that is the solution. Therefore, that is how we go about indices. The laws are outlined here. They are still here. You can take a screenshot of these laws. Make sure you handle more examples on the same. Uh, welcome again to shifting grades. We are going to keep you busy throughout this session. Thank you for listening to us. Kindly subscribe to our channel. Thank you.